groinal syndrome, urges, all the lovely things that go along with having OCD. <laughs> but really what this video is about is manifestation and how we are so powerful that we can manifest almost anything that we want to as long as we're worried about it or as long as we think that we don't want to <laughs> then all of a sudden it's going to happen. So first of all uh, my name is Chrissy Hodges. I hope this is live and okay. I'm downstairs in my new house so you may notice that some things are a little bit different. Sometimes the internet connection can be sketchy down here so I don't know if it's working. I hope it is. Um, but uh, Banana is still here. See, there it is. <laughs> so I originally wanted to do videos this way, and so I would be facing that way, but because it's light outside still, it just isn't working. So I had to do it this way. So banana is present, of course. We can't do a video without the banana. Anyway, today I just wanted to talk a little bit about the manifestations of the mind. A lot of it is because I just sent out my newsletter to uh, people that, uh, my email contacts, and I talked a lot about um, the quote, mind over matter, and how with OCD it's not about mind over matter, it's mind over mind. Everybody thinks manifestation can be this great thing in our lives, and it can. If you want something and you want to put it out there and, and think about it and the intention is there and everything comes to life, that's awesome. When you have OCD, not so awesome. <laughs> Because you're manifesting in your mind things that you really don't want to happen because you're being beat up every single day by a brain that doesn't understand that it's sick and doesn't understand that the things you're manifesting are continuing to torture that, torture you. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about what some of those things are. Now, if you don't have OCD, you may think to yourself, this chick is nuts. <laughs> And, and some of the stuff that I'm talking about is bizarre and weird, but I meet with people all around the world that live with this type of OCD that I'm talking about. And so trust me when I say this is a phenomenon that happens for all of us when we are living with OCD, which is we are thinking of things so much and hoping that they don't happen in our mind that they are actually happening. So let's start with this. So the title of this, I, I, I wanted it to rhyme somehow, but I just couldn't make it. I'm not that creative. <laughs> so the title would be like urges, groinals, and dreams, oh my. So I wanna talk about urges first. Okay, one of the big symptoms when you're living with pure OCD. So pure OCD is a nickname for how OCD manifests for those of us in the community when we have intrusive thoughts of a disturbing nature and then we have mental rituals. So mental rituals include ruminating, reassurance seeking, avoidance. Um, so we're thinking all day long about what it is that the intrusive thought is and worrying it's gonna happen and how do we figure out how to not make it happen or to find out 100% that it isn't gonna happen, yada, yada, yada. So, the mental, so those are the mental rituals. They don't solve anything. We think that they do, but they don't. They actually make things worse. So you have to be taught how to resist do the, doing the compulsions, which is a difficult thing to do because it feels like it's going against your survival instincts. So it's like, oh, I don't want to do that because then I'm going to be in danger. So the awful, <laughs> horrendous side effects of this is this. Okay, so if I have an irrational fear that I have a brain tumor, okay? So we are going to Think about all the time, oh my gosh, I'm going to go look for reassurance about whether I have a brain tumor and all of a sudden look at all these symptoms and then the next day you wake up and you're like, oh, I have a headache. Oh my gosh, see, that's one of the things for a brain tumor. And maybe I vomit or maybe I do this. And what's happened is you have looked and put into your mind, these are the symptoms of what this is. And so now your brain is going to start manifesting them. Mind over matter. Great for lots of people, not great for OCD people. Um, <laughs> so what happens is, I'm using that example, but then I'm gonna use the example of harm OCD. So this is where it might get complex, and if you don't have OCD, you're gonna be like, oh my God, what, she needs to be taken away somewhere. People who have harm OCD, so this is the fear that they are going to snap or 
something's gonna happen and they are gonna harm someone. So this can easily start off with, um, just to give you an example if you don't know about OCD, you could be watching cold case files, okay? Or you could be watching some forensic show or whatever, which just like 2020 and 60 Minutes are the bane of OCD existence. <laughs> but yet we continue to watch them, usually for your assurance. Anyway, um, you're watching that and all of a sudden it talks about someone who is all of a sudden they snapped and they killed their entire family, right? And so you think to yourself, oh my gosh, if that could happen to them, that could happen to me. So then it's this whole, oh my God, am I capable of that? Is this right? Do I, oh my gosh, if I, I got around my family and what if I do this and here's a knife and oh, what if I pick up that, yada, yada, yada. So the urges come with this in the way of, if you are constantly thinking about this, remember, mind over matter, so if you're constantly thinking about this and you're standing next to your family in the kitchen and you see a block of knives, okay, there they are, and then there's a family and you go, oh my God, what if, what if I pick up the knife and then I kill, and I stab my, I stab my wife, what am I going to do? That, you know, I'm using an example. Um, then you look at the knife and you, you feel yourself like moving towards them. And you go, oh my God, look, my body just went directly towards that. That must mean I really want to do it. So you see that is, I had an urge to do it. That's how we're communicating in our mind, right? Because we're looking at it as a logical, rational example for an illness that is not logical, that doesn't understand logic. And so your brain is so fixated on that block of knives. Of course you're going to go towards it, right? Of course you're going to. Now, Let's look at another example. I'm sitting in a business meeting, okay? And I'm, I'm surrounded by a lot of people at a table and all of a sudden I look over at the gentleman next to me and I think, oh my gosh, what if I accidentally lost control and grabbed his penis? <laughs> Sorry, but these are the things. We have to get graphic here because this is what's really going on. And I'm like, and I, you know, hunker down in my seat like, okay, don't move, don't move. And then I'm looking over and I'm, why did you look? That must mean that you want to do it, right? Why would you look? Oh my God, don't look. And then I'm sweating. So I start sweating, which of course in my brain is like, well, if you're sweating, that must mean that you really want to do it, correct? And then I start doing like this, like my hands are here on the table. And then all of a sudden my hands are like, oh my gosh, they're moving toward this person. That is an urge. It's this Oh my God, why is it moving? And so I'm sitting here, I have to put my hand over my other hand and maybe I decide, oh, I'm gonna sit on my hands. Because if I sit on my hands, I can't snap and I can't touch somebody inappropriately, okay? This is what it feels like to have an urge. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna this is super common when you're living with OCD. And so, but what happens is this, they feel so real in the moment, okay? And so all you're doing is trying to manage and survive them, okay? My hands were moving this way. I saw the knife block and I thought, oh my gosh, what if I snap? And so I need to get away from it. All of these are compulsions. I'm going to walk away, which is avoidance. I'm gonna sit on my hands, same thing, avoidance. And it's just as like this reassuring way if, I've, if I'm sitting on my hands, then nothing can happen, okay? But the biggest thing is this. Yes, you survive the moment, but then it's the aftermath that's so awful. What kind of, because then you almost can't even remember the scenario correctly because it was so heightened with a, an anxiety at 20 out of 10. You can't think straight because you can't think logically because that part of the brain isn't taking over right then. Survival, you know, it's fight or flight. And so you're doing whatever you can to get through it. But the problem here is all of a sudden, an hour later, you're thinking back and you are defeated and hollowed out. What kind of person would think that they couldn't control themselves and they would touch someone inappropriately? Or they would hurt their family and they have to leave the room because they might snap and do it. So then we judge ourselves and that's when the emotion comes in and hijacks the whole situation. So if you don't have OCD and you're watching this, you're like, this is stupid. Like you don't want to kill your family, then don't even look at it. Well, this is the, this is, this is the like nuance, like the bizarre thing about OCD. Every single day, every moment I could tell my brain that's not what I want, but I can't stop it because there's a malfunction in there. So if you don't have OCD, all I can tell you is this. If you're thinking to yourself, that's ridiculous, 
why can't you just say the thoughts aren't real? That is like trying to communicate to a pancreas that has diabetes. Why can't you just start working correctly? Like produce the right amount of insulin, please, so I don't have to suffer. You can't outthink a pancreas. <laughs> It doesn't work. The pancreas is going to do what it's going to do given the information and the, the support that a body can give it. A brain that is malfunctioning can do what it can do as long as it has the support and as long as it, it is functioning the way that it only knows how. And this is OCD. Our brains don't function the way that others do. So just wanted to clear that up. So as far as ur um, urges, so I'll just give you another great example. And, and there's two things I want to go with this. So a lot of times with urges, every single person gets them. It's not just uh, those of us with OCD. So if you don't have OCD, I can just tell you this. If you're on a big ledge, let's say you go up on this big platform and you're looking over, maybe it's on a mountain or something, and you think to yourself, oh my God, I could just jump over this really quick. And you go, <gasps> why would I have that feeling, right? Oh, let me back up. Ooh, that was scary. Okay, that's an urge, right? So when we have the urges, we attach meaning to why we would think that. Whereas you would back up a little bit and be like, oh, okay, that was a little scary. I don't think I'm gonna jump off the edge today. Someone with OCD would go, why would I think that? And then maybe from there, they would contemplate the rest of the day. What kind of person, again, the emotion attaching to it, and thinking in the judgment, what kind of person would think something like that? Does that really mean that I wanna kill myself? So am I suicidal? Do I need to go into, am I feeling bad? Do I love my life? And then all of a sudden you're analyzing everything. So there's that. And then when it comes to urges, when you have OCD, then there becomes the, it's like the, it gets a little mixed up on our in our heads of when we're acting on urges. So when I say acting on urges, I want you to hear me clearly. When I say that, I mean doing a compulsion, which you're not gonna think is a compulsion. By the way, you're gonna think of it as, I'm acting on OCD, so that must mean I really don't have OCD. Because there's lots of literature out there that says, if I have OCD intrusive thoughts, I would never act on them. And I think I acted on them, so that must mean I had OCD. Meaning, like, the whole rabbit hole of all we're trying to do is really prove that we don't have OCD. <laughs> Even though we do want to have OCD, but we're scared that we don't. So there's that 0.1% that we couldn't have it, and we're going to seek out any of that to prove or disprove. Sorry to confuse you, but if you have OCD, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> meaning... If someone feels like they're getting an urge and I acted on it, I'm gonna give you two examples and I want you to bear with me and understand where I'm coming from with fear versus desire. People have OCD have fears. They don't have a desire for the things that they are having intrusive thoughts about. So that's what you have to understand before we go into this example. So if someone has relationship OCD, which is they have these intrusive thoughts and doubts about their relationship. What they may think to themselves is, oh my gosh, what if I'm not attracted to my partner? And what if I want other people? Or what if other people want? Or what if my partner wants other people? So one of the urges they may get is when they're out and they see somebody and they think, oh my God, I think I feel attracted to this person. Oh, what if I act on it? What if I accidentally cheat on my partner? I know this sounds wacky if you don't have OCD, but it makes a lot of sense if you do. And they may say to themselves, well, I have this urge, if they're sitting by someone they find attractive and they're talking to them, they may have this urge to, oh my God, what if I touch them? Does that mean I cheated on them, my, the person I'm with? So they may actually put their hand on the person's shoulder. What they might be doing is checking or rechecking. Oh my God, I'm gonna touch this person. And does that mean that I actually just cheated on the person that I'm with? Does it? But what? someone's doing is trying to gauge how they feel about it. Okay, I touched the person on the shoulder. Was I attracted? Was I not? Did I feel something move in my groin? Which is the groin I'll talk about in just a minute. And did I feel this? Did I feel that? That is a compulsion. You're trying to gauge how you feel in order to prove or disprove a point. But here's the downside of that. You think it's this, I'm gonna get some resolve. Oh, look, I touched this person on the shoulder. I literally touched them. 
I didn't feel aroused. That must mean that I don't have any, you know, questions about my partner. Yay, all is awesome. 30 minutes later, later you leave and you're like, oh my God, why would I touch that person? That must mean I cheated and I don't really want to be with my partner and oh my God, I need to go home and confess. <laughs> it's compulsive and then you feel like you acted on the urge, which means, holy crap, I, you know, now it just negates any sort of reassurance research I've done that says that you don't act on things. So another one, and this is a serious one, and I want you to hear this, and I want you to understand what I'm saying. One of the most common things for OCD when it comes to intrusive thoughts and um, mental rituals is the fear of turning into a pedophile. Now, just saying that, you're probably like, oh, but I'm going to tell you something. This is one of the most common fears. It is somebody having an intrusive thought and worrying that that's what that's what they are or that's what they're going to turn into. And they're so terrified that their life turns into, I don't want to even go out of the house because I'm so scared that I'm a horrible person. So one of the things that I hear often from people is I acted on an urge to tr try to prove that I was or wasn't a pedophile. Now, you would think to yourself, like, if someone's saying that, what does that mean? They hurt a child? What that means is sometimes it's like, I just hugged my cousin, or I patted my, my niece on the back when I saw her, or I touched the top of my brother's head. I mean, to me, it's like, those are normal things we all do when we're around children, correct? It is. And, but people who are living with these horribly debilitating fears that make them feel like monsters every single day, feel like there's some sort of, this is going, if I, if I touch the shoulder of my niece, that means I was acting on an urge. So imagine the torment for somebody when there are day in and day out. Why do I have these intrusive thoughts? Why am I thinking this? This is not what I want. This is not who I am, but they can't stop thinking it. Okay? It's it's the I am so scared that this is who I am and I don't even know how to ask for help. And then I'm at a family gathering and I so much want to just like high five my nephew. But I'm going to high five my nephew and think, oh my God, does that mean that I'm, I'm meant to touch them and I just abuse them? So I went from a little lighthearted to very deep and, and, and heavy. And I want to, because I want you to see, and if you're suffering with this, I want you to see how it's understandable how difficult this is. And how every little movement you would have around your intrusive thoughts, you are looking for answers. And I want you to know you aren't alone. It's terrifying having these harm fears and having the pedophilia theme fears and having things like urges. Because then you... And, and when I say urges, I just mean like, oh my God, what if I lose control and do something wrong? Or I was with my family and I was with my friends and I did what I would normally do, but was did that mean I acted on it? Meaning like I fist bumped someone or I just touched their shoulder. Same with, with, with people who you know fear that they are going to turn gay or people who are gay that are afraid they're going to turn straight. It's the same thing. It's I'm around my friends, you know, that are, you know, the same sex or the opposite sex, depending on what you're, you're worried and you're looking to, you know, to prove and the urge. It's, you know, when I had HSCD, it was, oh my God, like why did I, I just hugged one of my friends. I hug all of my friends when I see them, but oh my God, did I stop and linger more with that friend? Does that mean that, oh my God, did I, did I accidentally do that? Was that an urge? Did I act on an urge? So my point here is to really show you that these are manifestations that happen in our brain that we are constantly trying to validate or invalidate. And it is a 24-7 issue. So urges are real. They are terrifying. But I also want to segue into they can't prove anything.
Meaning we're always going to be looking for some sort of answer when it comes to this of why did I have it? And what did this mean? What does this say about me? And then the emotion attached. What kind of person does this? I'm going to just say a person with OCD experiences the same things that you're experiencing. So you are not alone. Okay, with that said, I want to go through a few more things and I don't want to go on because I get really passionate about this topic and I don't want this to be a three hour video. <laughs> so let's move on to the groinal syndrome. Oh, I have tons of videos on this, gonna do more, I don't care. The information needs to be out there. So when I say that, what I mean is another manifestation, which sucks, it's one of the worst things that you can manifest. So if I, um, you know, if I were to be experiencing some sexual intrusive thought about something, you know, whatever, I let me just pull it out of the blue. Okay, so all of a sudden, like, I had this irrational fear about a family member or something, which I am not attracted to my family. I don't want to be attracted to my family, but we don't control what our intrusive thoughts are, right? So if I'm all of a sudden getting an intrusive thought about my family and I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, why would I think that? Who would think that? What? That's disgusting and I don't want this and I don't want that, yada, yada. Well, all of a sudden, every time I'm around my family member, I'm gonna think to myself, oh my God, am I attracted to them? Am I not? Am I not? The same way that I was talking about earlier with the urges, the same stuff happens when it comes to attraction. Like, if you are trying to tell yourself in your brain, like, don't feel a certain way about something, guess what's gonna happen? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole pink elephant crap that everybody says about OCD, which is, I get it, but it's so trivializing because who the fuck really is ever like, obsessed with pink elephants? Sorry, let's let's like discuss the real stuff. Like, who is ever worried about like incest OCD or pedophilia OCD or homosexual or you know same sex OCD? Like those are the real topics. Like let's focus on those. Sorry. But anyway, if you're telling someone not to think something or not to feel a certain way, it gonna happen. Okay, so if you're all of a sudden having like this aversion to feeling aroused to something and like, please don't let me feel aroused to something, what do you think is going to happen? Seriously. I mean, like if I walked out of this room and looked at Barney, my cat, and was like, please don't let me get aroused to him. You better believe in a hot second, I feel aroused. So that's the mind over matter piece that OCD people hate. It's just this constant need to try to prove or disprove that something can or can't happen. And then all of a sudden, because we're not wanting it to happen, then there it is. This is what the groinal syndrome is. This is this is one of the most horrible symptoms of having a C. And look, I'm smiling and it's not because like I think it's funny because hello, I get it and I hate it and it's miserable. But what I'm saying is, is that it's just so manipulative. Like, I remember when I had HOCD, and I may have shared this on a video before, but like when I had HOCD before, which is the fear of turning gay, which again, it's not homophobia, people. It's just, you have this fear of like, oh my God, what if I'm gay? And then you can't, you can't get rid of it. And then all of a sudden you're thinking, to, all of a sudden everywhere, boobs are everywhere. <laughs> like I've seen them everywhere. And then I'm like, oh my God, did I just get aroused? Yada, yada, yada. Well, I mean, the most irrational part of it is I'm sitting, I remember thinking to myself, like, I, I know that I, I know that that's not what I want, but everywhere I would look, I would see like a 95 year old woman walking down the road and I would be like, get the groinal syndrome. And I'm sorry, but like at 20 years old, I didn't want to make out with a 90 year old. <laughs> that's just the reality of it. So it's just, it's so deceiving and it's so manipulative and that's part of its trickery, but that's also part of why it's so debilitating because it's ego dystonic. So we understand that it isn't aligned with what we want. Um, it's not al aligned with our needs, our wants, our values, or any of that, yet we can't stop thinking about it. And that's where logic comes in and swoops up and says, well, if you're worrying about it, there must be some truth. And then we get stuck in the cycle for years and years and years. So, gruntal syndrome, we all know this. Like, 
for women, you know, it happens in the groin area. It, it, it mimics arousal. It makes arousal feel even worse than, not worse, but like it feels stronger than it would normally feel because you're checking and rechecking and rechecking and rechecking. I mean, like right now, if you're listening to this, like, you know, here's a little experiment. Like say to yourself, I don't want my groin to move. Like, I don't want it to move. Like, please don't move. Please don't move. All of a sudden, you're going to feel something down there. Like, and it will probably feel different than normal arousal. Like, that's how it happens. And then it just gets exacerbated and it turns into, it's like someone lit a fire down there. For men, it's, you know, it, women will feel things in their breasts. They'll feel things in all sexual areas. For men, they will feel them in all sexual areas for them. They will feel them in the groin. They will feel them in the back end. They will feel them in the mouth. Every, you can feel anything anywhere if you just don't want it to manifest. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. And so yes, that's why I usually have the banana here because it is an exposure. And then like for women, like now I have this, the hourglass. So the hourglass is representative of like a woman form, like being like the woman form. <laughs> So I'm going to put that back there somewhere. Somewhere It's just like a little exposure. Because it might make someone have the groinal. Anyway. Um, groinal, totally everybody with sexual, not everybody, but most people with sexual intrusive thoughts gets it. It's one of those things that says, oh my gosh, this must prove that it's real. And that's what's so horrifying about it. But I'm going to tell you, you're not alone. Okay, next subject, um, manifesting symptoms in our mind. I mentioned earlier, um, you know, like if you wanted to believe you have a brain tumor, you're going to have a headache, you're going to have whatever symptoms you look up on the internet looking for reassurance. But there are other ways that this can happen too. There's, and, and recently I've had a lot of people talk about this, which is, you know, the fear of um, needing to go to the bathroom when they're, they can't go to the bathroom. So whether that be peeing or defecating, it's the, if I'm told I can't pee, <laughs> or if I'm worried, you know, that I'm going to pee, like when people are going to sleep, things like that, all of a sudden your brain will tell you, oh, you have to pee. And you will feel it. You will feel the need to urinate immediately. And then it's all of a sudden like, I need to go check, I need to go check, and you're going to the bathroom, you're like, I'm not peeing, I don't understand, but I feel like I have to pee. Again, another manifestation of mind over matter. Same with vomiting. If people are like, I am in a situation where right now I had to vomit, I don't have anywhere that it's safe to vomit or I don't, not, not hello, y'all know me, I hate vomiting. But, you know, all of a sudden it's this, oh my God, now I feel nauseous. Oh my God, I really feel like I'm gagging. Like people will manifest the gag reflex. You start to manifest these things because this is how powerful our brain is when it's like juxtaposed with what we know is for real. This is what's so difficult about it. So then the next, moving into the next thing, that's when dreams come into this, okay? So people can argue or, or they can justify whatever, like, okay, I'm thinking this. But then once we enter dream world, people with OCD all of a sudden think that they're experts on dream analysis. <laughs> Well, I had a lesbian dream last night, so that must mean HOCD is real. Like, I made out with, you know, my family member in my dream last night, so incest is real. I killed someone in my dreams. That no, whatever. Like, the other night, I dreamed that I was swimming in a makeshift swimming pool and my arms wouldn't move. I mean, that doesn't mean anything. It's bizarre. It's, I was, there was another time where I was, like, pulling gum out of my mouth like a few nights ago and it was like coming out of my throat and I was like oh my god I couldn't talk or anything that doesn't mean anything it just is but here's the thing everything is always on our radar when we have OCD all of a sudden you know like I've said before in videos it you know I bought a Honda Civic of several months ago so now I see Honda Civics everywhere I see Hondas everywhere they're on my radar and that's what OCD does it puts things on our radar so then all of a sudden, if it's on our radar, it's going to be in our dreams. If it's on our radar, it's going to, we're going to have urges. We're going to have groinal syndromes. We're going to have everything because we're looking everywhere for it. This is because that part of the brain is really trying to warn us everywhere. And everything that we do, everything that we do is just communicating back to that part of the brain. Please keep warning me. So what you've got to do is you've got to get professional help. 
OCD is a chronic illness, okay? And so as much as it feels real, it feels real. I just described all these things, these symptoms that happen to us that feel so real that we think on our brain, there's no possible way this is a mental illness if I'm having this feeling. Yes, there is. There's your reassurance. But the reality is maybe you need to hear it to push you over the edge to finally seek treatment. You're going to think that your urges are different, that your groinal is different, that your everything is different, that you are different. You are not different. You are not special. OCD is OCD. You are not different than me. You are not different than anybody else. It feels real, so it makes you think it's real and it's different. And maybe Chrissy's didn't feel like mine. And maybe because of this, you know, whatever. I was there too. I still have those questions too. Seek professional help. There are workbooks too that can help. Freedom from Obsessive Compulsive Disorder by Jonathan Grayson. Getting Over OCD by Jonathan Abramowitz. The Mindfulness Workbook from The Mindfulness Workbook for OCD by John Hirschfield. If you can't afford treatment, buy those workbooks. Go to intrusivethoughts.org. Go to ocdonline.com. Get professional help. OCD is chronic. It's not going to get better. You're not going to outthink it. You can't. It doesn't work. Please don't attempt ERP on your own. It makes things worse. Professional help can help. I can help connect you to therapists. If you go to christyhodges.com, you will see my services. I can do consultations or peer support to help connect you with therapists that can help, whether that's international or here in the States. We can find someone that can work with you. So anyway, that's my message for today. One of the things I just want to leave you with is this. You're going to watch this video and then you're going to think to yourself, mine is different. Mine feels different. Mine feels worse. It doesn't. I can't convince you of that and I can't ever convince you that you have OCD. You could never convince me that I have OCD, by the way. <laughs> but what I can tell you is it's worth it to take the risk. Take the risk. Live with the uncertainty but find the help that you need. And I just want you to know, and I hope that you heard in any of this tonight, that you are not alone. Urges, groinals, dreams, anything that manifests in your body is normal for all of us that live with OCD. That was a little reassurance -y. Sorry if any therapists are watching. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that this is just part of having OCD and it will trick you into believing that it's not. It's your choice and you have to take you have to take the risk and you have to take the chance of saying, "Okay, I'm 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 going to believe that I'm not the I'm not the only one and that I can get help." And I'm here to tell you that you can and you aren't the only one. You're not alone and recovery is possible. So thanks for listening. I'm a, I, I was a little passionate tonight, but you know, it's one of my favorite subjects because I deal with it all the time. So <laughs> anyway, until next time, and I hope you have a wonderful holiday coming up July 4th if you're here in America and celebrate that. If you're in other areas in the world, I hope you're doing well and having a wonderful week.